Hi everybody, my name is An Chan Tech, the Chan, and this is my video. If you have been watching my previous videos, my videos are based of research on my findings, and sometimes I do my video log, aka vlog. And if you guys are certified, for example, A Plus, Microsoft, Cisco, there's still more to learn and keep on evolving. That's my motto. Today's video, I'm going to introduce you to the HPE. We now add E to it, Hewlett, aka Hewlett Packard Enterprise. This is called the ProLiant Microserver Generation 10, aka Gen 10. Now, this is a very good server. Unlike the predecessor of Generation 8, this one has display ports. Two display ports, so you can have 4K graphics. This contains seven USB ports. So you got two at the front, looks like two super speed one, aka USB 3. Let's turn this around. You got four at the back, that makes it six. You got two regular ones, USB two, and I'll show you zooming. And two, another two super speed, AK USB three. You can tell by the super speed as SS. And USB threes are like you got the blue cable bits. And the seventh port is inside. If you know about generation eight here, you can put USB plugs inside the server. Two network interfaces, just like the other one, generation 8. Two display ports, one and two, which is good. Now if you've got a HDMI TV or monitors, you can buy a display port, two HDMI adapters. Might not be adapter, you have like one end HDMI, other side display ports. Also have two PCI slots now, one eight speed and one one speed. So I was twice a good. I'm gonna open this up. So I'll give you a quick tour. So this video is gonna be a quick tour actually by the way. This video is gonna be an introduction to generation 10. So I'm going to kindly open this up. Okay, let's do it slowly. This is a another port. So you can put your DVD burner in there. I think the regular model is called a Jack Black HP model. Just like I use in a Generation 8 micro server. Um, that so this will play a major role. You have here the RAMs. This is a 16 gig RAM DDR4 memory, which is better and faster than the predecessor of DDR3. So you have two 16 slots, make it 32 gigs, which is twice as the generation eight. There you go, the fifth USB slot, as known as the internal USB. Let me just zoom in and show you. Let me put my thumb in it. See? There you are, the thumb right there. You can see the two PCI slots. It's a bit dark, let me just put a light in it. If you can see. So I just trying to get a, just trying to show you. Okay, it's a bit bright. Let's try it. Okay, you should be able to see it a bit. From the camera angle, okay, you might not see it properly, but it's right there inside there. And another SATA port. You might not see it properly because it's all a bit dark, that's why. So not focusing much on the internal bit, but the external features. Let me put this back now. Take 
down a bit so I can somehow pull it back in properly. I don't need a, I do not need a screw for this because I've already opened up before before the video making on this. Okay this kindly. Now the front port, the hard drive. You have the screws here. Unlike the Generation 8, you're supporting some caddy adapter. In this one, you do not need to do this anymore. Instead, the screws are for screwing a hard drive like, like this. Okay, it's a bit black, so you can't see it. But that's the example right there. See? And all you do is just simply slot it in like this. Once it's screwed in, it'll fit and slot. I kind of like the old way, but if this is much more easier for us, then that sounds good, if it's easier. And to eject it. I think it's still cold swap at the moment. I'm not sure if it's hot swappable yet, but I think it's still cold swappable for now. That's all I know as of this video. It might change. And that's how you insert a hard drive. And that's four slots. Now, as for the CPU, they are type 3 type of CPUs. They're all based off AMD Opteron. The CPUs are divided into three levels. Level 1, level 2, level 3. Let me just put it in front. The level 1 is the entry. And the level 2 is the medium. And the level 3 is the, the high end. The reason why you have three level CPUs because the CPU are now soldered down. Now if you don't know what soldered down means, it basically means it's thin laid and glued onto the motherboard. Basically means you cannot change the CPU. Now the three levels yeah when you buy this server there's three type of CPUs. The first level is the entry aka X3216. The second level is X3418. And the third level is the X3421. Now, this one here is the level 3, aka the X3421. Now, if you want to know more detail about the three levels, I'm going to put that on the description box what the specs and the speed are. I think the X34, the entry level, is the 1.1.8 gigahertz and the high level is 2.1 gigahertz so the three levels so you gotta buy one very carefully so if you want the entry one you're gonna have the entry CPU if you want the high-end one that's level three that's the high CPU one so you're gonna figure out which one to buy don't worry about the high spec one with the RAMs or how cool it is. The RAMs you can change. I'm gonna focus on the CPU. That's the important part. So when you buy one, decide which one to buy. In the first one, which is the 3216, the second one, the 3418, or the third one is the X3421. So again, I'm gonna put this on the description box. The specifications of the CPUs, the speed, the cores, everything. So it's not asking ask me, what's the difference between level one, level three? It's on the description box. Look at the description box, you see it. And you can decide which one to get. And there's another note actually, which 
a lot of IT community was concerned about on this is the fact that they removed the ILO, the integrated light out. Now, normally at the back you have the ILOs. On this one, they see two network cards or network interfaces, but no ILOs. The reason why they're now removing the ILO in this one because according to HP they're now focusing on small businesses and this survey is now targeting small business users so if you work in let's say you run a business for example Soho small office home office or a medium business can go up to about 100 users about 200 users up to just running on Active Directory Exchange server, file structure or file server, that's all. Not things like SQL and all the big stuff. They just focus on those low business. Or well, let's say a small chat organization. They target those ones. That's where they took out the ILOs. That's the reason behind the ILOs. Now, I might support the reason why they did it, but I disagree at the same time. I might support it because they've taught target on small businesses that's why they got rid of the ILOs but I disagree at the same time because I don't like the fact that they took out the ILOs and I wish they still kept it I'm going to give you a link to the to the video also I'm going to screenshot the comment section I'm going to leave you posted on this video for 10 seconds and I expect you to pause the video to watch it. If you didn't read it yet, please pause it for 10 seconds. There you go. Now you, now you know. Please let me know what you think of this video. Do you agree of this whole ILO? You should have should kept it, the ILO. You should have got rid of it. You did the right thing to remove it. They should have kept it. That's the topic they're talking about. Also, I'll give you some few descriptions on the links on the home server forms about the CPU stuff so you, let it, so you get to know more about the Generation 10 Micro Server. I hope this video is very informative and I thank you for viewing.